Hello, friends, and welcome back to Stories About Entitled People. Sometimes the best revenge is to shame the person. Our first story about this situation. But before we begin, don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you're new here and turn on notifications so you don't miss a new video every single day. Here we go. Steal from the garden? Here, I brought you dinner. Not my story, but my nanny's, and this happened decades ago. I caught up with my nanny recently, and I was reminded of this story. The dialogue isn't accurate, obviously, but hopefully you'll get the gist of it. My siblings and I had a part-time nanny growing up since both our parents worked. Her job was to pick us up from school in the afternoon, drive us to after-school activities, bring us home, and prepare dinner. We lived in a subdivision where my parents owned two pieces of property. One property where our house stood and an empty lot next door. The empty lot wasn't fenced in, and it's essentially a bare piece of property. The subdivision is considered small, only 60 properties, allowing everyone to know each other. My parents moved there in the first year of their marriage and were literally one of the first families that ever lived there. The nanny started working for us when my older brother came into the picture and stayed with us for over 25 years before she retired. Everyone in the subdivision knew her and loved her. Nanny loved to garden, and my parents gave her carte blanche on the empty lot. She cared for that garden so much, and we ate a lot of fresh vegetables and fruit growing up. Nanny could take home as much produce as she wanted as well. One day, Nanny started to notice that her harvest was decreasing and couldn't figure out why. There were bananas that she was sure were there a week ago that were now gone, The only harvest left were the ones that were already turning brown, etc. After finding out Nanny's concerns, my dad installed a CCTV camera along our perimeter fence that looked out to the empty lot where the Nanny's garden stands. Sure enough, the CCTV catches a neighbor stealing Nanny's hard-earned harvest. It was a new neighbor, Karen, who was treating our garden as her own personal produce section. Karen steals at the oddest hours, too, when no one could see her. Think 5 a.m. or 11 p.m.? Well, that didn't sit well with Nanny. We give away produce to our neighbors. If they ask for some, Nanny will give them away. The key word, however, is that they ask, not steal. So what does Nanny do? When Nanny was sure that Karen was the thief, she cooked an extra large serving of dinner one night and took some over to Karen's house. Her young son answered the door, possibly 8 to 10 years old, and Nanny asked for Karen. When Karen came to the door, Nanny, in a loud voice, said, I brought you dinner since I noticed that you've been helping yourself to our garden recently. I didn't want you or your children to go hungry. Karen was obviously red in the face and shut the door quickly without getting the food Nanny was offering. She missed out because Nanny was an amazing cook. Her son was right by the door watching the exchange, too. It didn't stop there. Since Nanny knew a lot of people in the neighborhood and people loved her back, She connived with some other people to bring Karen dinner for the next three days. On the fourth day, Karen's husband dropped by the house and apologized for Karen's behavior and offered to compensate Nanny for whatever Karen stole. As far as I know, no one messed with Nanny ever again. Info 1. This is in Southeast Asia. Info 2. When this happened, the garden was at least 13 to 15 years old and thriving. We had more than plenty for my and Nanny's family, We would typically give away whatever bounty we had to friends, family, and including neighbors. Nanny was an urban farmer before urban farmers were a thing. Info 3. We didn't fence in the empty lot because, one, we never saw the need to. It was a small development, and typically couples would buy multiple lots, build on one, and save the rest of the properties for their children when they get married and have families of their own. Even now, the area is only 75 to 80 percent developed. I reckon there were only 30 owners in total. Two, fencing would classify the property as a home instead of just a lot under HOA rules. The annual HOA dues for a home are two times the HOA dues for a lot. Not worth it. And our second story. The tale of 56 yards of rope. In my sophomore year of college, I found a job working at a high-end flea market type thing in a large tourist area by my school. It was a very cute, curated selection of vendors who made various products from jewelry to t-shirts to prints you can hang on your wall. It was all expensive as hell, and I got a job working with a posh older woman who owns her own clothing line, which we sold at this market. The clothes were nice, hand-printed, nice fabric, etc. 
I made $13 an hour plus commission, and it was a pretty easy job. Eventually, I proved my worth, and she had me do assistant work for her, which included picking the clothing up from our printers and printing labels and delivering stock to our two locations. She also became increasingly more neurotic, and I soon found out she was notorious for being a horrible person who everyone in the market despises. She burns bridges to the ground when she's done with you. Her attitude became worse towards me. She made me come in during a blizzard that caused a state of emergency, and I was beginning to realize her general mistreatment of me wasn't worth this money. Now, every three months, the market requires a refresh of the booths, and everyone closes down for a day and remodels their individual booths. They are small. I'm talking six and a half by six and a half foot square that we have to work with. She was known for hanging the items from branches attached to the ceiling with rope, and she also had a beautifully made chandelier that was about two feet wide, which was also hung by rope. Part of my duty as her assistant for the week was to buy rope. I'm in the owner's $7,000 a month studio apartment with an assistant manager and an equally neurotic dog, and this conversation ensued over the phone while my boss was on vacation. Boss, Jade's addiction? We need rope for the refresh. We need to hang four branches in the chandelier. Me. I checked the measurements, and it says the distance from the ceiling to the branches is about four feet. They're hung from the exposed pipe on the already low ceilings. So if we double the rope for each branch plus the chandelier, we'll get another four feet. I say we get at least 85 feet to be safe so we have enough extra if we need more. Boss. That seems like far too little. Me. Four times two is eight. Eight feet on either side of the branch is 16. 16 feet times four branches is 64, plus another four for the chandelier. Boss, I think I've done this long enough to know more than you. We need 85 yards. Me, 85 yards is 255 feet of rope. There's three feet in a yard. Are you sure you don't mean 85 feet? Boss, I know what an effing yard is. Your measurements are off. I'll send you the money to pick up 85 yards. The assistant manager calms me down after I hang up and calls the owner herself for clarification and sends her a photo of the measurements and clarifies that the owner is aware the difference between a foot and a yard. Owner doubles down and calls us idiots, hangs up again. At this point, my assistant manager tells me to just get 85 feet and call it a day. But I was so angry that I insisted I show her she's wrong. Assistant manager reluctantly agrees. I get $20 and go to Home Depot for the rope. Of course, the max they have on a spool I saw was 50 feet. I need effing 255. I explain to the worker and he gets me several spools, which cost about $30 each. Yet again, I send a photo to my boss and explain I need more money to make sure she's aware she's buying this much rope. Again, she sees me with five spools of rope and gives me the okay along with extra money. Assistant manager and I are in charge of supervising the guys we hired to help us assemble the new furniture we bought for our booth. Unsurprisingly, the furniture is too large for the booth because she didn't check the measurements, so we had to cut a cabinet in half. As it comes together, it's time to put up the branches with the rope. Again, unsurprisingly, we only use a little over one spool of rope. We now have four extra spools we don't need. The guys building everything call my boss to ask what to do with the rest of the rope, and she loses it. Starts screaming that I was too irresponsible and I should have gotten less, and I should have never listened to her, and I scammed her out of $100 to buy rope we didn't need. All the while, my assistant manager and I are standing there slack-jawed as the contractors get an earful on speaker. Everyone else refreshing their stations are staring at us, and I have tears in my eyes and four spools of rope. I also luckily have multiple texts, including the photos I sent her of the spools as proof that I checked with her. I refused to return it and said she can figure it out when she gets back from vacation. Surprisingly, she didn't fire me. She ended up returning the rope but never apologized. A few months later, I put in my two weeks because I got an internship and I sent her a cordial email thanking her for everything. In response, she sent me a bulleted list of all the reasons she was about to fire me anyway and how she was glad I quit before she could do so. Number five on the list, buying too much rope. And our last story. My grandpa was a pro-revenge master. So my grandpa had a long-going feud with his older brother. For some context, his older brother kidnapped their mother from her nursing home, hit her in Florida, and had her change her will to only include him, to the exclusion of her three other children. 
First, my grandpa's brother took control of the house my grandparents lived in, that was his parents, and the business they had operated for 15 years, their business on land owned by his parents. My grandpa offered to buy the property from his brother, but got the response, I'll sell it to you over my dead body. Grandpa's brother showed up with a cooler and lawn chair to watch as they were forced to move out. So my grandpa got a friend of his, Jim, to buy the property. After the sale went through, Grandpa's brother handed Jim the keys, and Jim motioned to my grandpa, who was hiding around the corner, to come and get the keys. Grandpa's brother was furious. Many years later, my grandpa is driving around with his son-in-law, my dad, when he runs over a skunk. He comes up with a great plan, heads home, and ties a milk crate to his bumper. Grandpa puts the skunk into the crate, goes home, and kisses his wife goodbye and tells her, I'll be back in a few days. He made a 24-hour drive to Florida, dumped the skunk in his brother's convertible, and makes the drive home. When my grandpa died, he had a newspaper clipping in his wallet headlined, Phony Bomb Diffused. Apparently, someone, while on vacation in Florida, strapped some railroad flares to an alarm clock and tossed it under grandpa's brother's trailer. Hey guys, thank you all for watching the video. I'll see you in the next one.